The Star Wars holiday special aged like fucking milk. Hello champions, my name is Guy. Welcome back to my channel. Now, if you know me, you know I'm a huge Star Wars fan. I even got shit on my wall, baby. I've seen every live action Star Wars project, except for one. Oh boy. Everything that I've heard about it being bad, I just assumed it was poorly written, boring. It was just like it dragged on. And don't get me wrong, it is all those things, but oh my God, it is so much worse. So why don't we just get right into it? I know two things about the Star Wars holiday special. Chewbacca has a creepy ass child and Boba Fett originally appeared in a, like a little cartoon in this. So the movie starts off just fine. We have Han Solo and Chewbacca running from the Empire, classic Star Wars stuff. We learn that Han is trying to get Chewie back to his home for Life Day, the Star Wars Wookiee equivalent of Christmas. But this brief scene, which sets up the premise of this movie, is immediately undercut by 10 goddamn minutes of Chewbacca's family. You heard me right, Chewbacca's family just making noises. <laughs> What <laughs> the fuck was that noise? The dad's name is Itchy, the son's name is Lumpy, and the mother's name is Mala. After wreaking absolute chaos across his house, <laughs> Holy shit. Don't love me, no. <laughs> what the fuck? Wait, wait, what is happening? Lumpy is sat down in front of the TV like a good little iPad kid, and he watches a random goddamn circus act. You'll see a theme throughout this movie. For every approximately 30 seconds of plot, we get five minutes of random filler. So Lumpy finishes up his circus, and finally, after fucking 10 minutes of I don't know how it's getting worse. We finally get some human words from none other than Chewbacca. Yeah, we'll bring him to the screen. I want to say hello to him. Oh, he's not there yet. Is that it? Luke confirms that they left, confirms that they should be there, and maybe they're just running into a little bit of delay. You know how they are, <laughs> boys. We cut over to a fun little shop here, presumably on the planet of Kashyyyk. We see an Imperial engineer attempting to browse around, I suppose, and this shopkeeper whose name is Sondan, Son Dan. He's trying to sell this Imperial engineer on just some random stuff. Mala calls the shopkeeper and he delivers her a coded message that Han and Chewie are definitely on their way. You're wondering when that shaggy carpet you ordered will arrive at your home. It's on its way. You know, it was made especially for you by a little old woman four planets away. In fact, you might say she did it by hand. Solo. And they end up saying the word groomer far too many times for my comfort level personally. What's the matter? Would you like this? Just a groomer. Just a groomer. A groomer. Just a groomer, you say? At any moment, I'm expecting Chris Hansen to walk out. Followed by the implication that he doesn't shave his balls. I use one of these all the time. Really? Well, not all the time. But... Oh, wait. Wait, 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 Hold on. Well, not nope. all the time. But... Nope. Nope. He definitely did not look at his chest. He just implied that he never trims his pubes. And eventually, the shopkeeper manages to sell this Imperial Engineer on said groomer. And the Imperial Engineer steals it because the Empire are a bunch of bad, bad little boys. Just a groomer. Just a groomer. Just a groomer. This is the Star Wars Holiday Special 1978. We're about 15 minutes into this movie. And the next part rocked my world. We see Mala watching a cooking show. A four-armed alien is on screen, and unfortunately, they made the choice to basically put him in But only you know this Okay. Hmm. I have a question for you. Okay. <laughs> is this too close to blackface? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, so we're about 25 minutes now into this. And as you can see, not a whole goddamn lot has happened. Hard cut from this cooking show back to war. I believe the hyperspace jumped and just appeared near Imperials. It happens. And then we cut back to the Wookiee family. So now the shopkeeper shows up at their house with some life day gifts. Honestly, so nice to see that there's some local camaraderie in the Wookiee community, even during the days of the empire. He gives Mala this toolbox looking thing that will be important later. He gives Lumpy this thing that we will later learn is a transmitter. Happy life day. Yeah, kiss him. 
just a groomer. And he gives Grandpa Itchy a program for his, what they call a mind evaporator. I brought you that proton pack, you know, for the, uh, the mind evaporator. That's it, the mind evaporator. The mind? The mind evaporator? So right in the middle of the living room, hooked up to this giant virtual reality machine, Grandpa Itchy gets a bricked up. My voice is for you alone. I am found in your eyes only. I exist for you. Okay, so, um. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, stop. Oh. No. We are excited, aren't we? Stop it. Stop. Stop. <laughs> Why is he into human women? Now, we can have a good time. Oh, horny grandpa. No. I'll tell you a secret. I find you. <laughs> he's just he's hitting where you want. <laughs> I find you a door. I find you a door. I oh, I. <laughs> what point are we in? What we see is a fun little music video about loving and living in the moment, I suppose. And I can only imagine that Grandpa Itchy is a very lonely Wookiee. I don't know if he was married or if Chewbacca was born out of a summer fling, but Itchy really needs to get himself back into the game. He so clearly is longing for intimacy, and yet this damn empire taking over the planet of Kashyyyk is making it damn hard to meet anybody. What would the Wookiee version of Tinder be? Timber. Timber, because they're on trees. We are just moving from filler beat to filler beat to filler beat, and what's actually happened in the plot? Han and Chewie are late. Family's sad about it. Soon after, we hear the sound of a ship flying overhead. Oh my God, Han and Chewie are here. Lumpy's so excited, Mom's so excited. They all go run into the door, and... Oh shit, them's troopers, baby. For just a second, I was so genuinely invested in the Star Wars holiday special. I was so happy for them. I was like, oh my God, your dad's home. Just the sheer joy that Lumpy uh, expressed when he thought that his father was home is a little bit too uh, personal. Troopers are here because they suspect rebel activity on the planet. Spoiler alert. They're right. And they begin to conduct a search of the house. Now, do you remember that toolbox I mentioned earlier? Here's where that becomes relevant. As a method to distract the Imperials now invaded in this home, Mr. Shopkeeper opens it up and turns it on for another engineer who I'm not totally convinced isn't the groomer guy. He shows him a fun little rock and roll number. We're now nearly 50 minutes into this movie. For the next 30 minutes of this movie, I was not entirely convinced that I was awake. We just jump from like nightmare to nightmare to nonsensical set piece and nothing seems to like make sense anymore. Almost immediately, we jump from this rock and roll number over to Lumpy watching a cartoon. This cartoon, Wikipedia tells me, was the only part of this movie that was well received at the time it came out. However, for me, it felt like a nightmare. First off, why is C-3PO blinking? Why is he blinking is sideways? Like, no joke, I feel like I've had this nightmare. Han and Chewie were looking for a talisman of some kind when all of a sudden they dropped contact. Luke and R2 go to search for them in a Y-Wing, but they crash on this weird red watery planet. There they are attacked by a monster, but saved by the likes of one Boba Fett. This is the first appearance of Boba Fett ever. This came out before Empire Strikes Back. They find the Millennium Falcon and they find out that Han Solo has been knocked out by a mysterious sleeping virus caused by this talisman. Luke went unconscious. Boba Fett is like, I've seen this before. I know where they have the antidote for it. It's in the city. So they're like, fuck yeah. So they go to the city to get the antidote. But when they're getting the antidote, uh-oh, Boba Fett works for Darth Vader? Only the droids know this because the droids who are still back on the Millennium Falcon hack into the call between Vader and Boba. They get the antidote, they get back to the Millennium Falcon and they wake those two up. What is this Han Solo? And they're like, can we show you where our rebel base is? And Boba Fett's like, yeah. But then the droids are like, no, he works for the Empire. Boba Fett doesn't even push it. He just goes, peace. 
and he fucking flies out of there. He dipped that easy when he got caught. He didn't even like try to deny it. He didn't even like hold them hostage. Princess Leia definitely would have paid the ransom to get those two back. I don't know about you, kind of a shitty bounty hunter. So we're back out of the cartoon and the Imperials begin to search Lumpy's room. And I don't know if it touched some deep trauma within me. I don't know if it was the three drinks I had of me in this point, including an entire over full glass of red wine, but they start to break Lumpy's toys and they eventually grab this Bantha plushie and they rip its head off. And by the way, they didn't even find anything. And Lumpy runs upstairs and he finds his broken Bantha plushie, cries over it, and then brings it over to his bed and tucks it in to make it better. Aww. He broke his toys. Dude, what the fuck? Why'd they break all his toys? I don't know what the hell happened to me when I was watching this movie, but that like touched a deep emotional wound. This is how you radicalize people. Thank you very much. You break their fucking toys. Lumpy decides enough is fucking enough. And he goes over to that Christmas present that the shopkeeper got him. And now we learn it's a mini transmitter. Lumpy starts watching the instructional video for how to put this transmitter together. And it's the scariest fucking thing I've ever seen. If David Lynch had any involvement in the Star Wars holiday special, it was during this part. We see this guy who looks like a human, but he's actually a droid, but he's not a very good one. In fact, he keeps malfunctioning. It will provide many years of fun and valuable service for and will assemble our mini transmitters together. When the fuck did the Star Wars holiday special devolve into a nightmare? <laughs> Circuit. Breaker. Endurance and concentration are the key words here. This is a nightmare. This is a nightmare. I'm having a nightmare. Am I awake right now? The range of emotions this special is making me feel is kind of insane. But not to worry, the nightmare is nearly over. The TV in the Wookiee family's home turns on, and we see that Tatooine is being put under strict curfew due to suspected rebel activity, followed by an announcement that the next segment is required viewing for all members of the Imperial forces. I'm gonna cut out the beginning section of this. Let's just say, Dating norms have changed since the 70s, and this shit made me uncomfortable. But near the end of this required viewing, we get another musical number about this person's bar closing because curfew has been put in effect. So say goodnight, friend. Uh -huh. Good the night, slays. but not goodbye. Why? Is this required viewing for Imperial forces, you may ask? In universe, there had to have been like some Imperial officer's kids like film. And then we made it required Imperial viewing so everyone had to watch it. Head cannon aside, the Imperials start to get an alert that they are being recalled to base. And we learn that Lumpy, that sneaky little bastard, is transmitting it from his fake mini transmitter. What a devilish little bastard. And so all the Imperials leave, except for one. They leave one trooper behind to kind of watch over the place so that when the suspected rebel gets back, there's somebody here to deal with him. That stormtrooper figures it out pretty quick too. He goes upstairs and he sees Lumpy working with this mini transmitter, working with his mini transmitter and immediately goes, breaks the shit out of it, chases the little fucker downstairs. And that is when our Lord and savior Chewbacca arrives. Dad's home, dad's home. Almost immediately, him and Han spring into action. Chewie playing the helpless victim, the oh no, don't shoot me, while Han Solo sneaks up behind him, knocking the gun from his hand. And when the trooper goes to go grab it, <gasps> falls off the goddamn balcony. <laughs> You didn't even have to push him, he just fell. Chewie has his nice reunion with his family. Han is like, oh, you've grown up so much, kid. And then dips. He's like, I can't stay for this. I got cool shit to do. Shopkeeper's back and a transmission goes out. Calling officer B4711. We are unable to reach you on your comm link. Is there a problem? The shopkeeper jumps into action. That stormtrooper grabbed a bunch of our food and deserted. And the Imperial officer is like, Very well, we'll send out a search party. As if they're not going to immediately find the dead body at the base of the tree with the railing just broken. 
It's a pretty shut and dry case. The Empire of Star Wars has arrested and executed people on far less evidence than that. I'm pretty sure in canon, Mala and Lumpy get enslaved by the Empire. Maybe this is what caused that. But at least for today, they are safe. So the Life Day celebrations can finally begin. And how else do they celebrate? By picking up these little glowing orbs and... What the fuck? So they just start like tripping balls, I suppose. And they just like walk through this void into a giant bright light. Hmm? Is this supposed to be literal or are they like having like a shared hallucination? Are they connecting to the life tree, which I think is what's supposed to be happening. But if they're connecting to the life tree, how the fuck are these three douchebags here? Okay, all right, okay. I need to go to bed. Why does Princess Leia start singing at the life tree? She has a lovely voice, but I can't think of the in-universe like reasoning or justification. If they were also celebrating life day, why did Han leave? I can only come to the conclusion that Chewbacca's just tripping. They're just hallucinating shit. They picked up these orbs and through their hands, it just injected straight toxin. Or maybe, maybe, maybe the cartoon wasn't actually some like fictionalized version of events. Perhaps these glowing balls they have are not simply decoration. Perhaps these glowing balls are talismans. They are inducing these Wookiees with a sleep virus and they pass out. They just dream their little life celebration. We come back out of this fugue dream-like state to the Wookiee family sitting around the table about to enjoy a nice meal and they link hands and begin their prayer to the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Treesus Christ. And that is where our story ends. That certainly was the Star Wars holiday special. What the fuck? That could have been 20 minutes. That could have been 10 minutes. The amount of filler that is in this goddamn special is baffling. They couldn't have sold a shorter time slot or alternatively, they couldn't have told a better story. You can take the same exact plot. Han Solo and Chewbacca are trying to get to life day. Why don't we explore the deep psychology of Lumbawaru Chewbacca Jr. and how his dad always being in space makes him feel alone. We have the bones of it with Itchy. However, since his Wookiee wife died, he just hasn't been able to find any genuine connection. And the story of Mala, who's giving everything for her family, cooking up this delicious meal, trying to make this day perfect, but her husband isn't here. Her child is growing up without a consistent father in his life. And his father's making money for the family, and that's nice, but sometimes all you need is a presence. And not this kind. To the people making Star Wars right now, I dare you to try. Next year, I expect a brand new Star Wars holiday special, and I want it to be a damn good heartwarming story pushed away from the galactic war of it all. Merry Christmas, happy holidays. Thank you guys very much for watching. If you're new here and you wanna become a champion too, go ahead and hit subscribe and you'll get a pizza about that big. And I'll see you guys in the next one.